All right, now just as a reminder, this is a little movie about getting started. It's not a detailed lesson on using Photomatix Pro, which I'll get to uh, in the future. So anyway, this is going to be about tone mapping and using the detail enhancer. You have other options, exposure fusion, but right now we're going to go to tone mapping and only using detail enhancer. Down here on the bottom, we have different presets. Now, <clears throat> if I had a picture of an old car in a junkyard outside, I might choose the grunge uh, uh, preset. But for now, I want to go for the natural look. So I'm going to click this, this preset, and I'm going to click this button because I know what the presets look like, and I'm going to hide that right now. <clears throat> okay. If you're brand new to Photomatix, you could look down here, look at this little question mark. And this is really cool because when you hold your, uh, your stylus or your mouse, I'm using a stylus right now. If you hold your stylus or your mouse over a slider, it tells you down here in this box what's going on, what the slider does. So if, again, if you're new to Photomatics, so even if you need a refresher, click that uh, little uh, question mark, then you'll see exactly what's going on here. But I'm going to close that right now. All right. I'm going to end, uh, whoops, let me close that. I'm going to move this over here, move this over here. By the way, we can zoom in uh, to a picture like this, or if we just hold our stylus or cursor inside the picture, we can see, we can magnify an area of the picture. This is kind of cool. Pepsi inside, Coke outside. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to start with the white point slider and the black point slider. This, I think, is for me, again, everyone does uh, things differently in photography and in software. This is how I like to start. With the black point slider and the white point slider moved all the way to the left. What I do then is I move the slider to the right until I start to lose the highlights and then move it back to the and move it to the right, and then move it back to the left just a little bit to make sure I'm preserving those highlights. Because if you lose the highlights, you're really kind of losing the, uh, the benefit of HDR. I do the same thing with the black point slider. If I move the black point slider all the way to the right, you see I, my shadows get blocked up. So again, I start with these, move to the left, move them to the right, and again, because my monitor is calibrated, I know I'm going to get in my print what I'm doing here. I'm going to move the black point slider this way and move it back just a little bit. So after I've adjusted my black point and my white point slider, then I'll go up to strength. Also, I start with this moved all the way to the left. Here it looks pretty flat, not really a good HDR effect. And I'm, I'm really just eyeballing this. And that looks pretty good to me. As far as color saturation goes, if you want to create a black and white, move it all the way to the left and then dial in or slide in the amount of saturation. Look at this beautiful light up here at the top. Now, some people like pictures a little darker. Some people like pictures a little lighter. So this is where you play around with your luminosi your luminosity, the uh, brightness of the uh, picture. And again, this is a very personal choice. We could play around with the uh, detail uh, contrast. This is important, too. The lighting adjustments. If you want some quick fixes here, some quick ideas, you can play around with these buttons, which, by the way, look different in uh, Photomatix Essential. But because I want that natural look, I want to play around with the slider. And again, I'm doing this just by, eye by eyeballing it. If I move it here, you know, I'm really losing some of the shadows. But, you know, shadows can be your friends. Some people say shadows are the soul of the picture. So I like to use this slider. If we move down here, we see we have advanced options. We're not going to go into these advanced options right now, again, because this is really a beginner movie. Here's a really cool feature in uh, Photomatix Pro. It's called Selection Mode. Let me give you a quick rundown on this. But again, if you don't know what selection, what does something, to, this is what's cool about Photomatix. If you don't know what something does, click around. You could click on this little question mark here and click through this very quick tutorial and it shows you what it does. But because I'm here, let me show you quickly what it does. I'm going to click the selection mode. You have different lassos here. I'm going to select this lasso and as much as I like the way the, uh, this, the scene looks outside, I want that to look a little darker. So I'm making a selection here, a very quick selection. 
I might do, do this a little slower if I was by myself. And when you do that, you get then you can see attached to edges. So you could attach that selection to edges and you have different pixel widths here. So I'm going to close that. Once you have your selection made, and I could do it to the window over there on the right, uh, I'm going to hold down my control key, click inside, and I want to make this a little darker. I'm going to replace with photo at EV minus 3.3. Watch this. Now it looks darker. Now it looks cooler. So this is a really cool feature. Well, listen, that's a very quick rundown on uh, Photomatix Pro. If you'd like some more information on what I do, uh, check out my website, which is www.ricksalmon.info. I'll catch you later.